Hey guys, welcome to this week's vlog. This is an exciting vlog. This week, I'm going to be rereading my favorite book of all time. At least what in my heart right now is my favorite book of all time. And we will see at the end of this week, I guess, hopefully I finish it this week, uh, if it lived up to what I thought it was going to be as a reread. And obviously you guys saw in that previous clip what it was. But, okay, for starters, it's the most beautiful hardcover like I've ever seen. Look at that. It is so gorgeous. Whoever designed this is a genius. I read this book. Actually, it's really funny because I looked up on Goodreads because I was like, I thought I read it last November. And last year, I read it from October 27th to no November 7th. And it is the 26th right now. And so it's funny that... I have been craving to reread this for months. Like, I have never wanted to reread a book so hard as I have wanted to reread this one, but I'm so nervous that I, like, won't love it as much as I did, but I don't know how I couldn't, knowing all the things that I know. But it's funny that almost one year to the day, I am restarting this book and I am rereading it and I am so excited for it. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get done this weekend, but I am giving myself extra time by starting this vlog on Friday. And then we have a birthday party for a little girl to go to tomorrow. And then Rainer's birthday party is on Sunday. So those days probably won't get a lot of reading done. But I'm hoping if I can get a decent chunk done up front, like today, then hopefully I can finish it next week and this will all be wrapped up in one vlog. So I'm so excited. And I know like a lot of people really hate this book, but maybe... If you see me crying enough during this video, you will want to pick it up and talk to me about it because, oh my goodness, my heart is just like, it just breaks. Oh, it breaks just thinking about it. So anyway, I'm going to hop in. I'm going to start reading right now. And then this afternoon, I need to bake a cake. <laughs> read how much have I read what am I at I have already read 50 pages and put a cake in the oven Rainer's birthday party I don't remember if I mentioned this or not I might have on Sunday is Rainer's birthday party so I'm making his cake today decorating it tomorrow party time on Sunday but I sat down for a bit and I read the first 50 pages and you guys after knowing the whole story and like rereading it I teared up on the first page like the first page made me tear up which is like a good sign that i'm going to love it but everything that i've read so far it just makes so much more sense i made a note somewhere in here but it almost feels like the beginning of this book was like he wrote a love letter to the rereaders like oh i get that it's really it could be really hard and it was really hard for a lot of people to get through when they first tried it and i think I get the complicatedness of it in the beginning, but for me, I just, I trusted him. I knew he was gonna take it somewhere amazing. And so I didn't really mind that things didn't make sense in the beginning. Like for me, I don't always mind that. I thought the writing was really peculiar. I thought it was very like interesting and intriguing. And I just wanted to know, like I wanted to understand what I knew I didn't understand. And so I just kept plowing through. But on the reread, you guys, it, is so good like everything makes sense this time around and you understand why everyone feels the way that they do and you understand clay so much more and like i know what's coming and i know what's going to happen and i just like my heart is already breaking because i just love clay so much and there's something about this book where i feel like um and this is maybe why i love bachman bachman is like a very simplified version of this sort of writing if that makes sense like I feel like Marcus Zusak he really likes like um intricate phrasing and like more poetic kind of writing but I feel like he's still got that kind of sarcastic humor and he still does that like well this isn't happening yet kind of a thing and there's been certain lines that people have said in the book where I'm like, that definitely reminds me of something that uh, Frederick Bachman would write, but like in a less complicated way. And I think that's why I love it so much. But also the Dunbar, 
Dunbore. The Dunbore, oh my goodness. This is a trend. This is just gonna be a trend, my vlogs and me stuttering. The Dunbar boys remind me a lot of the brothers from Outsiders, and I loved The Outsiders so much. I thought it was so good. The only like critique I had was that it felt like it ended too fast, and I felt like I didn't get to know them as well like it was totally still a five star but it was like i just loved that family and i wanted more out of it and this book you get everything like you get so much and i love that they're like these rough and tumble kids and it's so sad because their parents aren't there and their mom is dead and like the oldest brother is taking care of all of his siblings and it's just oh it's so heartbreaking and like you watch the past and the present like come together and oh my heart, my heart. Don't worry, I'm gonna keep it spoiler free. Anybody who's read it will like just know what's going on, but if you haven't, I'm not going to wreck it for you because oh man, I am just like in love with this book already. But anyway, I have about 25 minutes left for the cake to be in the oven, which means I can't really do a lot of cleaning or walking around because I don't wanna make it fall down. So I'm gonna go read some more of my book while the cake finishes and I'm hoping before my kids get home from school, cause it's Friday, that I can very quickly film my wrap up and my November TBR, but that might be ambitious. I don't even know if I'm gonna survive this book. Like I am tearing up so bad and Penny, we're just, we're just starting to talk about Penny. And I am already, like, I already have a lump in my throat and like my eyes are getting watery because I love this story. Oh man, I just love it. Anyway, going back to reading. Oh, my heart, my heart. Do I look tired? I feel tired. My eyes are like falling out of my head, but I just reached, I just had it in my head and then I forgot it. I have read 165 pages of Bridge of Quay today. It's definitely going by way faster second round, um, but I love it. It's so good and you're just gonna have to like listen to an entire vlog of me just like being crushed. Like, oh, this book is just so soul crushing and beautiful and the relationships, all of them, so beautiful. I love them, they're sweet. They're just so, oh, they just, they just get my heart. Just, oh, they just do, they just get me. And I love everything about this, but I have read that little chunk already today and I am so excited. Um, I'm heading downstairs as soon as I finish this. Jared just went to close the coop for me and we're gonna watch some TV and then go to sleep. It's pretty late, I think it's already midnight. Um, I've probably read, I don't even know how long today, but a decent amount of time. And I am just loving it even more than I did the first time. And it might be breaking my heart even more than it did the first time. yesterday because it was Rainer's birthday party and it was chaos like pure chaos we had nine kids at our house including our own so seven of Rainer's friends were over and it was fun but my goodness I was so tired Jared and I like as soon as everybody was gone like we just crashed we just laid on the couch and our kids watched cartoons and Rainer like played with Lego and our evening was just done sorry I just ate a bagel and I'm like I can feel it in my teeth. Um, anywho, I came into town, well, this is like a tiny town. I'm in Port Dover, which is like 
Um, I kind of wanted to see Lake Erie because it's flooded. It looks like it's flooded into town, or at least it was yesterday. So I kind of want to drive up, not, not close obviously, but walk up and see how the flooding is and just because I'm curious. Anyway, I came into Port Dover today because there's a Lens Mill store here. I need to really quick just grab some fuzzy pink fabric of some kind because Owl wants to be a pink cat for Halloween. So I need to just quickly grab some stuff from the craft store. And then I want to run down, take a look at the lake see how flooded it is and then I'm gonna head back home. halfway through Bridge of Clay. I'm about 267 pages in. I am still loving it. It is so good. The story is so beautiful and reading it back the second time is just, it's an even better experience because you understand everything that you don't know until like the very end. And it's just, oh my goodness, it's like blowing my mind. I love it so much. You guys know I went to the fabric store yesterday. I vlogged a little bit of that. I went down to the water and it was like all the water was back down. Apparently someone explained this to me because I wasn't sure how the water could have gone down so fast because we did have a lot of rain. But I guess the wind was blowing it in, which makes a lot of sense because it's not very high up there. So it was actually just blowing the lake right up into town because the winds were so strong, which completely makes sense because we get like some crazy wind. Um, even out just in our yard. But anyway, I got fabric for the bottom half of Rainer's costume. I found some scrap fabric at home to make the top part. Anyway, I spent all yesterday afternoon and evening making two costumes, which you guys will see in this vlog. They're, they look better on the kids than they do on the ground. Although if you saw my Instagram, you did see them. Um, I wanted to be a pink, fl a pink fuzzy kitty cat, so we made her just this really, really easy kind of like tunic, teardrop shaped cat outfit, and then um, made her, oh that's a fancy hair, made her some like pink ears to go on her head, and then we'll just like do cat makeup. And then for anybody who watches Minecraft or plays Minecraft, Rainer wanted to be an axe villager, which he can't take an axe to school and he can't wear a mask so he can't have like a blockhead. But anyway, I made him an outfit that looks like the Axe Villager and it turned out a lot better than I thought it would because I didn't get any patterns or anything. I literally had to learn how to make sleeves yesterday for the first time ever. And aside from like a couple ripples that I put up here by accident, it did pretty good and I don't know how I survived before I got a serger and a sewing machine from my grandma because the last costumes that I made them, I sewed by hand on the floor and it took me hours upon hours upon hours to get those done and it was ridiculous. So anyway, today I took a day for myself. I 
had a shower. I had a shower at eight o'clock this morning. It's like almost two in the afternoon and my hair is still wet. It takes so long to dry and it's not that thick. Like I don't have that much hair, but it takes forever to dry, especially like this spot. Um, but I took a day for me today after the busy weekend and all of the making of stuff yesterday. And I am just reading still my favorite book of all time. Like I am gonna have the hardest time surpassing the love that I have for Bridge of Clay because it just hits me in so many places and I just adore it and I just love it and I love the sibling relationships. I love, I love the relationships. I just love it. I love it so much. Wednesday. Um, wow, this book is like killing me inside. It is so painful and so sad. <sighs> it breaks my heart and it is breaking my heart just as much or more the second time around. Like I have all these tabs in here. You can kind of, you can see all the different colors and all the different things that I have in here and oh my goodness I don't it's like I'm so sad that more people don't want to read this book or that so many people hated it or like dnf'd it because this book just like breaks my soul on another level it is so heartbreaking and so sad and I love these kids like I love these brothers I love them so much and I love Clay and his parents and Oh my goodness, like they're all so flawed, but they're all so just, I love them. And I don't, oh, I have the hardest time. Like I, I can get how people can't get into the writing, but I also don't understand how like people can't fall for this story regardless. It's like, it's kind of like a patchwork quilt and they're just telling pieces of the story and you don't know the whole thing until it's done. And it's so you just get pieces and bits and pieces <sighs> and I had to pause for a minute and I figured I might as well vlog because I needed to breathe for a minute before I continued on because I literally had so many tears in my eyes. I was like ugly crying and sobbing out loud about people who don't really even exist. Like that's the part that gets you. They don't exist. And I feel like they do. I feel like someone is telling a true story. It feels like a memoir of someone's life and it's just... Oh, it's so good. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading. Keep breaking my heart. There's no more blue tabs for a little while, so hopefully I'll get a little reprieve from the sadness and my brokenness. Um, but yeah, I love this book so much, in case I haven't said that enough during this vlog. Sight, then I would have no light, and someone else would find your beauty new. I, 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 I,
Hey guys, it is Friday night and I am hopping on here to close out the vlog. I finished Bridge of Clay last night and my face was a mess. I have just been breaking out so bad this week and I've been stressed and when I get stressed, I tend to pick at my face and I like all down here, you can see, see all this? That's not normal, it's not usually there, but when I get like a feeling too, I don't know. Sometimes I just, I pick at my face and then the fact that I picked at my face bothers me because I wrecked my stupid face. So anyway, today I have been having a rough day. I was, my kids woke me up really early this morning and I kind of lost my cool with them and I had, hey Luffy, hi cute bee, don't touch it. Um, I had a rough morning this morning and I was kind of having a rough day. I was in a horribly bad mood. I lost my crap on a spam caller, which at least I channeled all of my like angry feelings into something that I don't even feel guilty about yelling at this stranger because these people, they literally call me five to 10 times a day. I get spam calls and they're always calls about either cleaning my ducts, which I don't need my ducts cleaned. We're fine. My ducts are fine. And I'm pretty sure that you can't clean them from Cuba or wherever the other random places that my phone says you're calling from are calling from. I don't think anyone from Cuba is coming to clean my air ducts. I don't think it's that important. Plus we have a landlady and she gets people to do that for us. Um, and then the other calls I get are for my social insurance number, which are never real. And it always threatens my imminent arrest. And so it always says to press one or else you'll be immediately arrested. And today I just, I was done. I was so done. And I pressed number one and they answered and they were like investigation department. And I went off on them like a sailor. I do not want to quote what I said because it wasn't nice but I just lost it today I lost it so hard and I hate doing that but at least in this instance I really don't feel bad about what happened and so I was yelling at this person and this person and I tweeted about this so if you follow me on Twitter sorry for like the double story but this person started yelling letter F your mama over and over and over and over and over and over again. And so I was like, finally, after he yelled this like 10 or 15 times, he was just yelling it over and over. Like, here's the perfect catchphrase because this person's already mad. Let's antagonize her. And I finally yelled, I think that's already happened because you're speaking to me. And he actually started laughing, which almost made me start laughing until this person replied with, well, maybe I should with your mama so that we could make you a sister. And I was like, that's disgusting. Sorry, my sister called me to ask about wine selections because that's the kind of day that I'm having. We're hanging out tonight. Um, but yeah, so that was disgusting. And then I called Jared to Adam because I was trying to get him in the group call because I just wanted to know what was gonna happen. I was being curious and it was stupid and kind of obnoxious and this whole part is kind of obnoxious. But I'm just so over people calling my phone five to ten times a day and filling up my voicemail box and I was just at my wits end and I know that nothing can come from it there's no callback number or anything like that so nothing's gonna get resolved but I feel a little bit accomplished that I at least hollered at the person who was ruining my life today but yeah I was in a terrible mood and my sister came over pretty much exactly when my kids got home from school we played twister we turned the day around it's fun she's actually gone out to pick up subway and wine and we're gonna hang out and I think her boyfriend's gonna come over later. Jared's out helping my brother-in-law and his sister move, or sorry, his sister and our brother-in-law, I said that really weird. Um, helping them move tonight and possibly tomorrow. We have a busy weekend, yada, yada, yada. Anywho, I've said nothing about Bridge of Clay. Oh my goodness, I am the, I'm literally the worst. I'm gonna try and pause this because you guys are probably hearing Thomas the Tank Engine in the background. Sorry, that, this this clip is all over the place. This week has just been, it's been a really good week, but the last couple days have just been like busy and go, 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 and it's catching up to me. Uh, so anyway, I finished Bridge of Clay last night and it was just as beautiful as I remembered. There's really not a lot to say now that I haven't said 
throughout this vlog and throughout this week, that book, like, it's going to be hard going to find a book that just punches me in the heart like that one did. I feel bad because I feel like when I want to talk about it, I always need to give disclaimers of how I understand that people don't love it. And just being myself, I do. I get it a little bit. Like, I get that the writing is a little bit weird. And I feel like maybe, because I've never read the Odyssey or the Iliad, I don't know what order they go in. I've never read them, but I kind of want to now to see how the book reflects on those books. But I loved Bridge of Clay. I thought it was beautiful. I thought the characters were beautiful. I think the writing is amazing. And I understand why it took him 10 years to write that book. He packaged everything up into such a beautiful little box. And it just, it just, it warmed my heart. It broke my heart. It warmed my heart. It broke my heart. It warmed my heart. I think I've never said this before, but it does end on a good note. Like it, for such a heartbreaking book and for all of the things that happen in it that completely break your heart, the ending is good. It is good and it's loving and it's sweet and it's Dunbar. It is so the boys and I just, if I had a t-shirt, like, okay, you know those t-shirts for a little life and you guys know how I feel like feel about a little life. The t-shirts that were going around with the four names. If I had a t-shirt of either all of the pets names that they have from Dunbar's which I guess would kind of just be an Odyssey or an Iliad shirt I would love a t-shirt that just had the five Dunbar boys on it I would love that or just all the Dunbar characters if it was like Michael and Penny and Clay and Carrie and Rory and Tommy and Henry and Matthew I would buy that I would buy that shirt because I ship this family so hard and that might be I might be that almost 30 year old who just used something way out of context but I love this book I love it so much and I don't love that it has blasphemy in it and I don't love like swearing doesn't really bother me but blasphemy does and I literally went through the book and I blocked out all of the things that like made me feel sad in my heart because the story the story is one of the most beautifully put together, thought out things I've ever read. And a lot of people think it's pretentious. I've read the reviews, I know, but I love it. I love it on another level. This is my favorite book of all time and I will read it again. I will read it again and I will read it again because it is so perfectly put together and I loved every minute of it. And so I'm going to end this here Leave me a comment down below. Does Bridge of Clay sound like something that's up your alley or sound like something that you're totally going to hate? And what is going on for you this coming weekend? Do you have any special plans? Anything fun going on? Let's liven the mood because we ended on a bit of a sorry note and a bit of a like sassy sad note. Um, and while you're down there in the comment section, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already and the bell so you don't miss future notifications. I do upload most. Mondays and Thursdays and I will talk to you guys all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and for joining and for all of you newbies who have subscribed. There have been so many new people this week. It's just so exciting and I thank you all so much and I will talk to you guys all next week. Thanks again. Bye. Can you say bye, Lulu? Bye! bye. Bye.